Welcome to Mental Wealth, the podcast to invest in your mind. Here I will help you make sense of your mind and behaviours, giving you the tools to have your best life. There is so much to share, so let's get into this episode and explore another great topic. Welcome to episode 39. And in this episode, we're going to take a deeper dive into meditation and mindfulness and just taking that time out. So important for us to talk about it. And I have brought a very special guest in to help me with this episode. And I'd like to welcome Claire Morton to the show. Hello. How are you? I'm good. It's brilliant to have you here. Claire, Claire, tell everyone a little bit about you and what you are an expert at. Okay. Oh, a great question. So my name is Claire Morton. I am a life and business strategist. That title changes every week. Um, but I basically help people with their life, their life's purpose, their well-being to then be able to help them in their business and career. Um, and obviously what part of that is helping them to really connect to who they are and part of how I, I do that and how I teach is through yoga and meditation. Um, because I've, I've been doing this work for 21 years when I discovered personal development in um, when I was working in the corporate world. And I love teaching the concepts, so, you know, of emotional intelligence and self-awareness and great leadership. I'm always fascinated by di- the differences of people. And then I did... Um, a qualification as a Myers Briggs practitioner many years ago, about 18 years ago. And that for me really, really opened my eyes up to say, wow, I'm so, there's so many of us and we're so different. Yeah. Um, people think differently, they feel differently. So I was like, wow, that, that really gave me an insight into me. And then 10, about 10 years ago, I um, went through some personal trouble and a friend um, asked me to go to a yoga class. So I went to the yoga class, did some meditation, did some yoga, postures and stretches, and I just kept crying through the through the class. And I was like, I'm not doing this again. I keep crying. She was like, Well, you need to cry. Stop trying to be say that everything's okay and allow allow your body to just release. And from then on, I fell in love with meditation and yoga because we live in such a busy world of we're always doing one thing, then we move on to the next. There's always something to be done or someone to save or look after. And it really helped me to slow down and reconnect to me and what I wanted. And then that's what led me then to leave in the corporate world a few years after that. Yeah, so in 2017, to start up my own training business. But then meditation and yoga became part of my journey. And to be able to teach that with all the other modalities has been amazing. So I I absolutely love talking about meditation and the science of meditation, of how it actually physically helps the body. So I was made up when you asked me to come on and talk about it. Yeah, let's talk about that. Because I think there's, you know, we all know that it's a thing. We all know that it's available to do. But I think some people I often hear say they don't really know what it is. And they think it's about emptying their head and having no thoughts, which we know, and I'm sure you're going to put some more information on that. It's not possible. That's not the goal. And I think for me, it is just breaking down almost the myths or the the missed messages that are out there so that people can start to think, okay, well, maybe it is right for me. And I think that's something that we can definitely do in this episode today. Yeah. Um, Again, I... I use the term, we don't get, we don't meditate to get good at meditation. We meditate to get good at life. So if you, and I know that it's not for everyone. I know my husband is like, I don't need to find myself. I don't need, when I say, just come and do this, and I don't need to find myself there. I already know who I am. (laughs) Um, But I know for him, he's a very calm person anyway, and he is quite, he is quite present. And his meditation is, just sitting and having a cup of tea watching the football or yeah. going for a walk with the dogs. And that's what my my aim is, is for us to, and that goes into the mindfulness piece of, if you have a daily meditation practice, and there's so many different types of meditation that you can do, and I have my own technique that I teach, um, 
And there are loads of apps out there with like, you know, like you can lie down, sit up, you can do it as you're walking. So for me, I'd just go back to basics and say, okay, meditation, you don't need to do any more than 15 minutes a day. And if you, there's a med, the meditation that I teach is like, if you do it in the morning, it then puts your body into rest and digest. It takes you into that, that beautiful place of stillness. It takes the body and its chemical makeup into, and that it, it brings on the dopamine. It brings on all of those endorphins, them, them lovely chemicals instead of the body being in cortisol and adrenaline all of the time because we're moving. So first of all, if you start the day off, Within 60 seconds of you doing some breath work to go in, the body's gone into that nice piece of balance. And then we, we do a mantra meditation where we literally take the mind and we focus on a mantra for 10 minutes of that meditation. And then we finish with gratitude. That type of meditation gives you focus and energy for the rest of the day. And if you did that meditation each morning, it also helps you sleep at night so you don't have to do a sleep meditation before you go to bed mm. it really gets you into that practice and the one thing i'll say to people as well is what you said it, you cannot clear your mind Med and that's why if you're a perfectionist or if you you've meditated maybe once or twice before and the first time that you meditate typically people will go oh my god that was amazing i want that again i want that that feeling i sort of went somewhere for a little bit and then i and then i came back and that's called the bliss feel that's what i call it and people try to get that and i'm like that's right because you're trying to get something again so mm -hmm. just come back to the breath or come back to your mantra or focus on one thing but also know that in that 10, 15 minute meditation, your mind will go off into thought and you might think about what's for tea tonight or you might think that you've got to check your phone. But just sit with it, come back to that mantra, come back to the breath, stay with the present moment, focus, and then you can come out and go about your day. And then if you have that practice each day, then you'll be more mindful in the day. So that's when the meditation works because you are so present with the people that you're with. Yeah. You're literally with them. You're in the conversation. You're nowhere else, but you're with them. Or you're present with yourself. Or you're present, you know, on a walk and you're noticing the sky and the floor and the leaves and the flowers. You know, we all have it. But just very few and far between. And that's when we just connect to the heart and we come out the head and into the body. And a lot of people are living in their heads, we're worrying about one thing, you know, getting to work, dropping the kids off, creating the report, being in traffic jams, going to the gym, what's the tea tonight, worrying about parents. So we're constantly in that narrow focus of just getting through the day. Whereas if you have that practice, it just allows you to flow through the day and be present and actually stop and ask yourself, does that need to be done today? That thing that's on my list, does it really? Am I feeling that today? No, let me do that tomorrow or let me do that next week when I feel the energy coming to do that thing. Because if we just force stuff all the time, we, it's like trudging through water and it, it doesn't work. It doesn't help anyone. No, I love that. We come, yeah, we come to the conversation or the, or the party or the, the gathering with the wrong energy and people feel that mm. so if you're more mindful of the things that you're choosing to do even like being more mindful of you you know are you opening the fridge again because we're just we come in i used to come in open the fridge bottle of wine shh, pour a glass while i'm making the dinner whereas now it's like i'm going to the fridge do i actually want this glass of wine no i don't it's just mm. a habit so it just gets you to be more mindful of your habits and to make better choices as well. Choices, yeah. I mean, I think choices is such a powerful word that we almost, it is a superpower almost, and we don't use it as we should, actually choosing to not do something, choosing to do something. But I think something that I hear people say, and, and you've touched on it so, so beautifully, Claire, is that people do have a go at meditation find it hard to do because their minds keep going off and then they think they can't do it. So then they say, oh, it's not for me. Yeah. Yeah. Or people think it's, oh, it's all woo-woo and it's very spiritual. Well, the fact that we are human beings in a body with a spirit inside or a soul, we are, that's, that's what we are. 
And mm-hmm. the sooner we, we learn this, the better, because this body is for taking. We need to look after the body, but we also need to look after the soul and connect to the heart. And th- that's exactly what I teach is around everyone's meditation practice is different. We've all got our own things going on in our head. But the more that that's why it's called a practice, so that you could you could wake up one morning and have a practice and think, oh, that was felt that was really good today. I've stayed focused and feel nice and chilled, and I can go about my day and I can serve and I can be present for everyone. Other days you've got other stuff going on in your life, the head's busier. It can take you a long time to, mm. to to slow down and get into that. But just by you doing having that time, that practice will still allow the body to come out of fight or flight and into rest. Even though you might think, oh, that was a busy, that my head was too busy. Mm-hmm. You've still took that time out. And I always say to stop trying, stop, don't try to meditate because the more you like go, and, mm-hmm. the more you'll get a headache. So yeah. it's like you just sit with your thoughts. You sit with that mantra or the breath or the guide that you're listening to. And every time you float off into thought and then you realize, then just gently come back. And then you'll just you'll just keep. And then the more that you practice, the more that you find the focus will come. Because in Sanskrit, and it's a limb of yoga, it's called jhana. And that means um, one flow of perception. So you're training the mind to just focus on one thing. That is all that means. And, and the more that you practice that, the, the more it will become a little bit easier and it, because it brings the two hemispheres of the brain together and this is why I love the science part of it you've got your left and right hemispheres of the brain and they and then you've got the corpus callosum in the middle of the brain so when you meditate that grows thicker so then because that happens it means that you've got more access to both sides of the brain mm-hmm. when you're hitting some problems or challenges in daily life so rather than you reacting in the moment with anger or, you know, that energy that's not going to help, you will be more mindful the, rather than you going straight into instinctive mode and, and react. You've got that time in the moment to access and go, how am I going to get through this trap jam? Or that person has just said something to me. And instead of reacting, you'll, you've got access to both parts of the brain in the moment to then go, I'm not going to react breathe and you'll respond as opposed to react and it's it honestly people when they start meditating and um, people who've done my courses have, have got voice notes and said i've just been on the school run and someone's just cut me off and i just flowed through mm-hmm. and and i'm not angry when i got to win <laughs> it's Love like that. yeah because you've got the choice now to say do you know what send that person who's just give you the, the b-side some love and compassion because they might be on the way to work and they're, they're, they're stressed out or they've got rushed into the hospital and you just crack on about your day and, and you don't need to respond. Don't take on that energy. And it's hard to do. It sure. is hard to do that. But if you have a practice where you where you do start to slow down and you can see things more clearer and feel them, you do set, then say, if you breathe, I'm just going to crack on. I'm not responding today. Maybe tomorrow or later on. Mm, yeah, it's, it's so magical. I think that's something that's really interesting, maybe for people who haven't tried it before and have kind of thought, oh, it's not for me. Maybe, you know, as you say, but woo woo. Actually, if you focus on it being a mechanism or a vehicle to be able to deal with stressful situations better, that might be a different way of focusing on it and making it maybe more important in your day. Because again, I often hear people, and I'm sure you do, Claire, I haven't got time. That's the most ridiculous statement when it when we're looking for something that's actually going to help our bodies, our minds, our spirits, etc. But I think that might be a great way for a few people listening in who haven't prioritized it yet. And and yet they are still getting angry about things, getting frustrated quite quickly. Wouldn't it be brilliant if they could see after a few uh, sessions? Literally. Yeah. After a couple of sessions, you you literally see the world differently because you're connecting to who you really are. And a lot of us don't know who we are because we're too busy putting up on a face for the rest of society. And I and again I I know I've been there. I'm still working on myself. Whenever the finished article, as you know, 
Um, and but I'm really happy with who I am right now because I am truly being me. And if you don't like me, that's okay. And if you do, then that's also okay. But I want to go through life being who I was born to be and not being something else for someone else because that's not that's when you are attracting the wrong life to yourself because you're not actually putting yourself first and then some people think that's that's say that well that's selfish but if you're not well and you're busy and you're getting sick then you can't save anyone else that way Mm. and there's so many people living in that fight or flight response 70 percent of doctors visits are down to stress and we don't have to be stressed And, and again as i say there's there's good stress and there's bad stress good stress obviously is we want to keep ourselves safe. We want to make sure that, you know, if you're crossing the road and a car's coming, you're obviously going to run across the road because you don't want to get knocked over. Yeah. Or, you know, there's, there's, there is stresses, that good stress that keeps us going and it keeps us alive, you know, and sometimes that nervousness of speaking on stage or creating a new training program or, you know, learning a new skill. We do feel a little bit stressful and we go into a bit high beta sometimes, but that beta brainwave. It's like if we're constantly there, sure. We, we we can't be we can't perform, we can't be ourselves because we're constantly living in survival. And if we're living in that energy, the body is literally just trying to keep us alive. So we want to come out of that fight or flight and come into rest. Yeah. And it it massively does it. And then, you know, the top athletes in the world, top people, most of them meditate because they it helps their performance, whether you're an athlete, whether you're a mother or father who's looking out after kids, which is a huge job, a business owner, a hairdresser, a florist, if you can do take that 15 minutes out for yourself each day, you will perform better in life. Just life becomes easy um, and you're ready for life's challenges because none of us are getting out of life without any heartbreak or challenges. Um, but it, it allows you to ride that wave a little bit better and to also sit with the pain. A lot of us are, are, are distracted with, you know, drink, out, drinking alcohol, drugs, gambling. Our phones are an addiction now. There's so many things that we're using to distract ourselves from really sitting with ourselves. Mm. And I, I, I know that because I'm still working through that myself. To be able to just sit and be and do absolutely nothing. Yeah. People are like, oh my God, I'd be so bored. And it's like, but just try it. But people are avoiding stuff and that's mm. why they're numbing themselves down. And so when you first start meditating, some people have, have, have said to me, Clara, I cried. Is that normal? And I was like, absolutely. Just like mine. You're sitting with yourself. You're sitting with your thoughts. You're sitting with how your thoughts make you feel. And it's like, it's like a sadness, but it's like a, oh, oh, it's, it's actually there I am. <laughs> but you're honouring, aren't you? You're honouring yeah. who you are. And if there is sadness trapped in there, or if there is something else, sit with it. And I love that sort of thought of just pushing yourself to sit with things. I mean, I'm often saying just sit with that uncomfortable feeling. Something amazing will come out. But you're right. You, you, you allow it to pass through. And the energy can, like, that energy leaves the body. That stress can leave. But it can be quite mm. It will be. I, I think we have to say it will be. A hundred percent. But then, and then this is like, there's, there's no there's no growth. It's still without challenge. And, and we are here to grow and we're changing all of the time. But a lot of people, and, and, and especially in our society, is all, oh, let's go out and have a drink. Let's go out, let's have a, but it's associated with, doing something or we've even you know you'll be the same the clients come to you and like oh, i just want to keep busy i want to keep busy because if i don't I, I, I need to keep myself distracted and it's like okay well what, what are you distracting yourself from let's look at that oh and then that, and then you sit with them and then allow them to give them that time to sit and that's what meditation can do that for you for free mm-hmm. um, or you can go to a meditation class you can take up yoga because meditation is a limb of yoga. So when you're practicing meditation, you're actually practicing yoga. I think loads of people associate yoga with going to a class and getting hot and sweaty and stretching and posture. 
but meditation is part of a yoga practice so you are actually practicing yoga um when you meditate and a lot of people as well think meditate and um, lying down that's relaxation meditation needs to be done sitting up because the spine and, and the head and the brainwave state that you go into you're typically going to fall asleep if you lie down so that's why i say no for 15 minutes sit up straight spine be comfortable on a chair if you want or on the floor whatever's comfortable for you but allowing yourself to stay awake because it's the, it's the different brainwave states it'll take you into and then it'll bring you back down and the rest that it gives your body people I just love it when people start getting into meditation and then they message you to say, oh, everything just feels a little bit lighter. I love it. I love yeah. it. Well, hopefully some people listening in today who may not have tried it before or maybe tried it before but didn't quite get it going, hopefully they feel inspired to get going for themselves. And I think something, a few little tips that you've said along the way hopefully can help people remembering that it is their practice and it doesn't have to be the same as everybody else's. They also have to keep working at the practice. That is the point. And I think that's the biggest takeaway for a lot it's of people is just to remember all you're doing is keep bringing your attention back, keep bringing it back, keep bringing it back, because it will go off uh, into different things in our day. We have 60 to 70,000 thoughts a day. So you're not going to clear your mind. Absolutely not. We're not monks sitting in the middle of a monastery or on top of a mountain. We are people in a busy modern world, but it allows you to just have that human experience in a better way. But I, I've got a free meditation masterclass there that talks about all that. So I can share that in the show notes with you. If that you would be brilliant. Thank you. And that, that explains the science and, and a guide for meditation at the end. That would be amazing. Thank you for that. Oh, thank you so much for coming and sharing your expertise and your knowledge on this topic. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's been brilliant. And hopefully, like I say, there might be a few people out there who just think, do you know what? I'm going to give that a go. So I hope they do. Thank you for listening and sharing in this episode of Mental Wealth. Remember, you can subscribe wherever you get your podcast. My last question to you is what is the one small thing that you can take action on from this episode? Message me on Instagram or through our website with questions you'd like me to explore. You'll find the links in the show notes. I'll be back with more tools and tips to make sense of your mind in the next episode. In the meantime, be kind to yourself. Bye for now. Oh, 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 oh,